Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs fixing. All over the country, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries, and not all of them are human. Dogs have 200 million smell receptors, making them really superior sniffers. And dogs' noses don't get much better than Shirley's here, because Shirley's nose is a bit of a lifesaver. Shirley's nose has been trained to help Rebecca. Rebecca has type 1 diabetes. This means that her body doesn't produce a chemical called insulin. And amazingly, Shirley's incredible nose can sniff out when there are problems. Insulin's job is to make sure you have just the right amount of sugar in your blood. When your body doesn't produce insulin, blood sugar gets out of control. So if your blood sugar is too high, you inject insulin. And if it's too low, you have to eat something sweet. How many times a day do you have to take insulin? Four times. One for breakfast, one for lunch, dinner and night time. But Rebecca's blood sugar varies depending on what she's up to, and Shirley can spot it. This is something that humans could never do. She's able to detect changes in Rebecca's breath as soon as they happen, and usually that's before Rebecca has even the slightest idea that anything's wrong. So this is definitely a dog that thinks there's something going on. Yeah. When Shirley smells a problem, she licks Rebecca, and her blood can be tested. 3.8. Then she can inject more insulin or get help before things get dangerous. What would have happened before you had Shirley? I would have had the ambulance once or twice a week. So since you've had Shirley, how many times have you had an ambulance? Um, like once in three years. Shirley's on call for Rebecca 24-7, checking on her right through the night. Rebecca leaves for school in the morning while Shirley catches up on some sleep, but she soon wakes up for duty. Do you actually feel happier that Rebecca's safer when Shirley's around? Yeah, very. Shirley's always on the sniff. <laughs> <laughs> and Shirley's sniffing keeps Rebecca safe. Shirley has completely changed Rebecca's life because although Rebecca will always have type 1 diabetes, now, thanks to Shirley's super sensitive sniffer, rather than calling all those ambulances, all she gets is lots of big wet doggy kisses. Yup. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. The West Midlands Ambulance Service is on standby all day, every day, to respond to emergencies. I'm hitching a ride in this rapid response vehicle so you get to see up close what it's like to be first on the scene. If you have an accident, this fast medical service is ready to help 24 hours a day. I've got my camera. Eric's in the back with his camera. We're going to get you as close to the action as we can. On call with me, it's paramedic Jan Van. This service takes thousands of 999 calls and a new case is just in. We've been called to someone who's choking. Now, if they're really choking, they won't be able to breathe. So this is a real emergency. We have to get there as soon as possible. The screen tells us they're older than 16 and they've got a carrot stuck in their throat. That's all we know, but that's enough. A fast response can save lives and paramedics like Jan are often first on the scene. It's only taken about five minutes to get here to see James. How are you feeling, James? Oh, I'd be feeling much better if we could get rid of this cut it out of my throat. He's not choking, but he can't swallow. And as James is diabetic, this could be really dangerous. Because if he can't eat, his blood sugars are going to be affected, and that can be life-threatening. So poor James has got a bit of carrot stuck in his esophagus. That's the tube going from your mouth to your stomach. It's causing him real problems now. Because he's not able to swallow, his blood sugar is getting low. 2.5. He's in real need of something sweet. Right, and what I'm going to get you now is that sugary gel, just to see if we can get your sugar levels up a little bit, OK? It should just absorb through your, mm. through your skin and your mouth, so you don't have to swallow it. Yeah, it's gone. And now that's done, what about that carrot? He'll need to go to hospital and have it surgically removed. It's not a big operation, it just involves putting a tube down his throat and removing the blockage while he's been sedated. Jan's job done, it's now safe to transport James to hospital by ambulance. 
Bye, James. Take care. So that's a really good result for James. It'll be quite easy to get that blockage out of his throat in hospital. But if it hadn't been done and if Jan hadn't been here, his blood sugars would have got dangerously low and he'd have been in real trouble. But he's not, thanks to the paramedics. And if you ever have an emergency, there are hundreds of similar crews around the country ready to help. Ouch. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. This is a rapid response car. It's one of a fleet of vehicles that respond to up to 3,000 emergencies a day here in the West Midlands. Time to find out what it's like to be first at the scene of a medical emergency. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case has come in. So we've been called to see someone with diabetes. We don't know exactly what the problem is yet. Their sugar could be high, it could be low, there could be something else going on. But what we know is we need to get there quickly. Moments later, we arrive at the house. Hiya. Inside, the man, Tony, is having some problems with a medical condition called diabetes. That means his body doesn't produce a chemical called insulin and his blood sugar levels get out of control. Uh, I've woke up this morning, I've got a blood sugar of 20. OK. Um, checked it an hour later, it's still at 17. OK. Doing another 10 units, each arm, and it's dropped down to 1.4. OK. So now, Tony's very sensibly called the paramedics because his blood sugar is too low. The problem is, so earlier in the day, it was too high, and he took insulin yeah. to bring it down, and he's taken too much insulin, and he can't get it back up again because the insulin's still in the system and working. Once your heart and your blood pressure and that have been checked out and they're fine, I can pop a little drip in your arm and give you yeah. some yeah. give you some glucose fluids. Tony's heart and blood pressure look fine. I feel actually a lot better than I did when you came through the door. Yeah. So Jan can now help boost his blood sugar levels by giving him a sugar called glucose. He's not able to eat at the moment and he's vomiting when he does eat, so he can't maintain sugar levels by himself. So that's going to raise his sugars up hopefully enough that he can cope at home. If it drops again, then they'll have to go to hospital. 8.7. Get some food down, yeah. yeah. As Tony's blood sugar levels return to normal, he can hold down food and start to manage his diabetes on his own again. When it's really severe, like it's been today, then you need a little bit of external help. So when we arrived, Tony's blood sugar was dangerously low. Now he's much more relaxed and, crucially, he's safe and he hasn't had to go to hospital. And that's all thanks to the emergency services. With hundreds of rapid response crews in the UK, if you have an accident, an emergency service like this won't be far away.